this video, I'm going to step you through how to do Holt Winters method in Excel. Uh, what I'm going to use for the data set that I'm going to do it on is the number of houses sold in the United States, starting from 2015 all the way till the present. Uh, and let's have a quick look at the graph of that data to make sure it's suitable. So here are the number of sales. This is for all housing types in all markets in the United States. Um, again, from 2015 till now, this is actually thanks to redfin.com, wonderful source for real estate data. Um, okay, and so yeah, you can see there is this very distinct seasonal pattern to this data. I was actually quite surprised. Um, little note, this data did take quite a bit of massaging. Um, there was about a million data um, in all the rows and columns um, when I downloaded it. And you can just boil it down to whatever you need from there. All sorts of different um, stats are within the data set that they give you. It's awesome. Um, so yeah, so you can see very lows here are right around January 0101, so January 1st. Very highs are right around June for each year here low in January and high in June, low in January. So this is the same repeating pattern every year. Very well suited to, um, to Holt Winters and very surprising how seasonal these house sales are. So again, this is the total number of, number of homes sold in the United States uh, for the last five years here, basically, or four and a bit. Um, okay, so getting back into Holt Winters method. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'm going to look at the monthly data in this video. So um, we're going to do the monthly initial values first, starting with the seasonal values. Uh, so what I do for each of these, I take the actual Y value and I divide by the average of the first year of Y values. Okay. Let me zoom in just a tiny pinch here. Good. Okay. So yeah, I take again the actual Y value divided by the average for that whole year. And then I can just copy that down. The whole year is the same. So all the way from January till December, do the same thing. Now, moving on to my initial level, take Y13 divided by S1. Okay, so let's just have a look here. So I numbered the periods. I always like doing that. I'm just gonna hide. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna hide the date and the year. Um, so we can just see the period number and then the month. So right here, this is going to be where I put my initial level. Uh, and I take my actual, uh, which is my Y13 here, and divide by seasonal one. So notice I'm in January. I go back and divide by the seasonal from the previous January. That is called seasonally adjusting or deseasonalizing. When I take my amount and divide by the seasonal factor. Also note the seasonal factors, seasonal factors correspond to kind of how high or low the data is compared to the average. So if you'll notice January is very low, it's about 60% of the average, whereas June is very high. Uh, let's look at June seasonal factor. It's at 1.28 roughly. So it's 128% of the average, whereas January is about 60% of the average. Um, Okay, um, and when you divide by that seasonal factor, you strip off that seasonality or you deseasonalize. Now, onto the trend. Um, so the initial trend here is the formula. I'm just going to move this over here. So it is y13 over s1. Uh, so y13 divided by my seasonal one. Notice that I'm comparing again uh, January's data dividing by the seasonal for January. Um, and then minus y12 which is this guy. And remember Y is your actual. So it's our actual number of houses sold divided by seasonal 12. Seasonal 12 will be this guy right here. Go on. And then um, that's it for my initial values. Now um, I can start using these formulas right here. So let's just move them a little bit closer. God. Okay, so now we need to do this seasonal factor here. Now, what I'm going to start with, uh, I just start with 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1 for these guys, and then I go optimize them later. So alpha, beta, and gamma are all 0.1. Uh, and then here for my seasonal, my first seasonal I'm going to go get here, 
uh, that's not an initial value, take gamma, which is this symbol right here, so we'll grab that gamma, times by my y, so times by the January, uh, divide by my current level, LT means current level, so that one, okay, plus 1 minus the gamma, again, times by my seasonal T minus M. Well, what does that mean? So M is my number of periods per year. So for quarterly before, for monthly, uh, it would be 12. Oh, and sorry about that. Okay, so what this means right here, uh, go back one year, go back 12 months in this case. Um, so just go look and see what time period you're in. So I'm in January, so go grab the seasonal from the previous January. Okay, so for the seasonal, always look and see what month you're in and go grab the seasonal from the previous month. Or sorry, from the previous year for that same month, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's my first seasonal. Make sure your two references to gamma are locked, and they are, and then you can copy this the whole way down. Ignore that division by zero. Uh, and then just delete it here at the bottom. So we don't want any seasonal factors beyond our last data point. Now going back up, I'm now ready to get my level and then my trend. So my level is equal to uh, alpha, lock that reference, always lock the references to alpha, beta, and gamma, times yt, so my actual, uh, divided by seasonal t minus m. Again, that looks great. Just see what month you're in. You're in February. Go grab the seasonal from the previous February. Why don't you grab the current February seasonal? Because we don't have one yet, so we go grab the seasonal from the previous February. Okay, now plus one minus alpha, so plus one minus alpha, uh, times by the previous level plus the previous trend. Okay, the previous level plus the previous trend. So this method is really quite similar to Holtz method. If you haven't gone through the Holtz method, uh, do that first, especially if these formulas aren't making that much sense. In the Holtz method uh, videos, I step through uh, these equations quite um, slowly uh, and uh, talk about uh, where to put each of the values um, and substitute them in. And this, again, Holt Winters is quite similar. So if you're struggling so far with what I'm up to, go watch the Holtz videos first. Um, okay, so I've done everything for my LT, hit enter, and now as long as I've locked my references to alpha, which I have here and here, to alpha, then I can copy this the whole way down and just make sure at the bottom that we delete anything beyond the last uh, data, which is March of 2020. Okay, next is the trend, um, so take your beta times by your current level, this guy, minus your previous level, that guy, plus one minus beta, again, block beta, times by the previous trend. And only lock the alpha, beta, gamma when you're doing this, and then just double click, notice I just double clicked on that little green square to click this all the way down. Uh, I can clean up these bottom values at the end too if I want. I'm just going to scroll down and clean them up now. Okay, and then finally the forecasts. So the forecast for the next time period is the level plus the trend. So right here, this forecast is going to be that level plus that trend times by now. This looks a little bit scary. Seasonal T minus M plus 1. I ignore all of that. What well, that means, current period minus m, m being the number of periods per year, plus one because I'm forecasting one period ahead, but I don't even bother with that. I go, okay, I'm forecasting for February. I'm going to go grab the seasonal from the previous February, right there. Okay, so if I'm forecasting for February, use the previous February's forecast. And then just copy that the whole way down. Okay, and then we'll clean up the forecast at the very bottom after this. Let's go get our errors also. Always a good idea. So take your actual minus your forecast. 
And here I'm off by 68,624 homes sold. Okay. Interesting. And they're all too low for now. Oh, some are getting higher. Uh, we'll clean that up later. Um, okay. Good. Um, and now at the bottom, let me grab this formula here, this guy. So if I'm forecasting into the future, K is my number of time periods ahead of my last data point I have. So I've just written my Ks here. What I can do is the following. I can take my level plus K times my trend times my seasonal. Now I'm going to lock my level and my trend because they end and I want to keep grabbing those. Um, my K is right here. There it is too. And then let's have a look at this guy. So again, I'm forecasting for April. This H53 actually comes from the previous April's seasonal value. So again, if I'm forecasting for April, go grab the seasonal for the previous April. Okay, and then just copy that down. And there we go. There are all of my future forecasts here. Okay. And then always a good idea is to go get your root mean squared error. So square root of the sum squared of my errors. Okay. Divide by the count of my errors. Control shift down to grab them all very quickly. And then close my bracket. So there's my formula yet again. And I'm not quite done yet. Okay, next step, that's quite a large RMSC. Next step is to use data and solver. And everything's in here already, but let me just show you. So I want to minimize my RMSC, which is in M7 here. Um, minimize it by changing my alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, and subject to, I want my alpha, beta, and gamma to be less than or equal to one, and greater than or equal to zero, click solve. Click OK, and there we go, much better. Now we have an RMSE of 20,000 instead. And you'll notice your errors tend to jump more now between negatives and positive, which is really good. OK, and your forecast and your errors are going to look like the following. Uh, I did this on purpose here. So your first video in the PowerPoint slides in the previous video here. Or sorry, the first image that you see is this one uh, with the different seasons and overlaid over top of it is actually the uh, actual and forecasts from this Holt Winters method for this data set. So this graph is actually the graph of um, these forecasts and actual um, number of homes sold from 2015 until now in all of the United States.